Hello and welcome back to the sad show. That's what we all love about Pride and Prejudice. How sad it is. Wait, I may have gotten that wrong. Well, it's when the Lizzie Bennet Diaries got pretty sad. Serious. Dealing with some difficult stuff. If you feel like you need some support right now, check out the Patreon. Wait, that's to support me. My name is Ashley Clements, and these are the Look Sad Diaries. Have I done that bit? It's not the first sad episode, but uh, it's... Ooh, it's also not the saddest. I'm referring to this arc. I'm referring to this whole arc. And I don't specifically remember what happens in this episode. Clearly what I remember is like the end of 87 and like that's actually it from this arc. Um, but this one is with Jane, so it can't be the saddest, but it will hopefully show Lizzie having gone on a little bit of a, a journey in her understanding of the situation. I was thinking about the fact as I was editing the last episode with Rachel Kylie, which I had filmed before the episode 84 with Jay, that of course revenge porn is the most accurate term for what this is, but we weren't using that term at the time that we were discussing it. I don't know if that was really in the zeitgeist. It wasn't a term I was familiar with. We didn't have laws preventing it. A quick Google tells me that laws about it started being passed kind of right after this. But we, the team making the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, we always referred to it as sex tape. And so Rachel and I discussed it that way because that's the term that we've been using for a decade. But the non-consensual nature of it is of course the most important part. And if you watch the episodes of the Lydia spinoff with Wickham, Rachel did a really good job of the progression of that controlling, abusive relationship. And it's so cool, as Rachel said in the last episode, that the way she wrote those were influenced by what Wes had done in his brief appearances on Maine. And then of course we've heard Gigi's story, and I was thinking about the fact that not only is it a very empowering thing that the Lizzie Bennet Diaries did to give Gigi agency, let her tell her own story, but also that we get so much detail, more than we get about Georgiana in Pride and Prejudice, because we only hear Darcy's side and his observation of what happened. But Georgiana would have experienced that very differently from the inside, and the novel doesn't really explore that. So despite the fact that we all know, and Lizzie knows, that Wickham is someone who has calculatedly used people, she still leapt to the conclusion that Lydia was making thoughtless choices without fully thinking through the repercussions of her actions and coming at it with the same slut-shaming assumptions that she has always had about Lydia. So let's see her reckon with that, yeah? Let's uh, look back. Oh, hello, you look sad. I wore a different plaid shirt. Hair is so long. Yeah, it, it, we all, we really had to stretch this out for it to last over four episodes. It was tough. It's an interesting defense. I don't know how I feel about that. That we didn't really need to prove it, but you all deserved the story. How this whole thing has affected my sister. Please don't subscribe to that website. Except, you know, in world, it's fine because it's sort of fun. Please think about what you saw and stay far, far away from it. Okay, that's a pretty good defense. That she's showing you just how hurt she is. Oh, hello, fabulous addressed person. Come on in. Right, so this echoes in Pride and Prejudice that he goes searching for Lydia with um, 
with Mr. Gartner. Oh, that would be a hard conversation to have with your dad. So not good. We can't tell mom this. That's also like, <laughs> that's a real messed up dynamic, but it's very true. Oof. I mean, you can at least tell them that I like, broke up. Like, you don't have to tell her everything. Oh, this is sad. I'm just trying to keep it light for, you know, everybody. But I cry. <laughs> Me cry. As I had said previously, because all the buildup had been there because we were so invested in these relationships and because it was well written. I didn't have to try to cry. I couldn't really say a lot of these words without crying. So that made my job as an actor easy in a way that uh, felt very rewarding, that it was all just right there. I was already having Lizzie's feelings. And then, of course, Jane is, you know, the best, which is why, thank goodness, she shows up for this arc. Because she's, like, the best. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm invested in watching this because I don't remember a lot about this. I mean, what's insane is I think this is the same arc in which, like, Bing comes back in a few episodes. Was that on the same shoot date? That, that seems insane, but I think it was. So, yeah, this was the January shoot, yeah. Yeah, but maybe she'll talk to Jane. She's not ready to talk to you, but she might talk to Jane first. Yeah, and that's important. Oh, yeah, we're doing a lot of self-reflection, and that's leading to some feelings here. It's, um, it's called regret, and that's uh, <laughs> guilt. And that, can, that can be useful in terms of uh, doing better going forward. But we don't want the audience to do it. Ooh, wait, I... Lizzie still hasn't watched them at this point? Dang, bro. You're all about how much you realized and you still haven't watched those? It's a slow learning curve, okay? It's a great observation. Ha ha ha, yes. Oh, I have to think that through. Ooh, there's like a little truth bomb drop there. Sorry. Yeah, it's like having Jane come back and be this sort of more reasonable presence helps Lizzie be able to process. And I mean, it's funny, right? Because she said, maybe Lydia will listen to you because she doesn't want to hear from me. But the same is true for Lizzie. Lizzie listens to Jane and she doesn't really listen to Lydia until the next episode. The big cry. And I guess that that was also an important prompt for the audience as well. If you have not watched them yet, we told a lot of story over there. I understand at this point if it's too difficult to rewatch them, but there are a lot of people who didn't know they were there or weren't watching them because they didn't care about Lydia, or thought they didn't care about Lydia. And the comments on the Lydia videos are so smart. I just sort of glanced through them, but they are people really pointing out all the subtle and not so subtle things that George does to manipulate Lydia, to isolate Lydia from her friends and family, to make her feel like 
He is the only person who understands her, who is there for her, who will love her. He starts controlling aspects of her behavior. He starts coercing her to do things that she does not want to do. A lot of the red flags for an abusive relationship are actually overlapped with the red flags for a cult. I mean, the goal of both is control. And you sometimes see in abusive relationships, including the Lydia Wickham one, the same kind of defensiveness of the person inside it as a person defending a cult <laughs> that they're in, really needing to believe that this is good. And the way that both of those things set themselves up, someone from the outside saying, hey, you're in a bad situation proves the point, feeds into the narrative that they have been fed about how other people don't get them and don't support them and don't want them to be happy the way that the abuser or the cult does. I don't know why I got into cults here. I just think it's actually really interesting to point out. And when I talk about red flags, when most people are talking about red flags, it's not at all in any way to imply that Lydia should have seen and done things differently. A lot of the red flags were hidden from her by Lizzie, kind of unintentionally not realizing that that would lead to harm, but she didn't have all the information even that Lizzie had. And again, kudos to the writers because Lydia was in such a perfectly vulnerable position to fall into George's clutches because she did feel like the people who were supposed to love her had abandoned her and had maybe never really seen her until the next episode when everything is magically fixed. Sort of. But I remember seeing comments on the Look Back Diaries when I mentioned red flags when George first appeared months ago and some of them asked, what, what are the red flags? and go through the comments of the Lydia spinoff because y'all are very smart and people have already basically written academic papers in the comments explaining them. Let's take a look at the comments and see what you all thought about the sad times. Lauren Conrad says, I'm just so amazed that these writers were able to translate what happened in the 1813 novel and those repercussions to make something similar with the same repercussions in 2013 happen in these videos. You guys are geniuses. Oh yes. Um, the writers are geniuses, but it's a great point too that this does echo a Lizzie Jane scene in the book that happens during these events. Sarah Jean Lapitan says, Lydia listens to both of us, but sometimes I think we forget to listen to her. Good line. Yes, it really is. Very good line. Molly Willow says, but if this were real, some of Lizzie's viewers would probably also watch Lydia's stuff and let Lizzie know. So really what we know is that Lizzie doesn't read comments. That was happening. There were people in the comments and tweeting at Lizzie. There were absolutely fans who were trying to tell Lizzie, for sure. Well, thank you, Fiona, Valerie21. Can we just appreciate how good Ashley Clements' acting is in this episode? For sure we can. Oh, the girl at number 43. Am I the only one watching this and imagining Darcy watching too and is heartbreaking? I don't know. Sometimes y'all's obsession with Darcy sort of mm, is a little weird because... Uh, Lydia is really suffering right now, and Lizzie is sad, and Jane is sad, and we're like, but what about Darcy? He's also sad. Hell yeah, Aaron Howarth says, cheers to Rachel Kiley. This must have been a tough one to write, and she nailed it. Bravo. Oh, thank you, Christopher Verdery, for pointing it out. As if the actresses aren't talented enough, you have to notice some of these videos are one takes. Yeah. Actually, most of them have been for a long time, but um, every line, every pause, every tiny little gesture has to be perfect, and yet it still comes off as completely natural. I don't blame Lizzie for not being able to sit through Lydia's videos. George is terrifying in them. Mm. Jadu Blue saying, this happens to so many women nowadays. The arc of this web series is incredibly poignant. Yeah, I mean, I think that's really the main reason that we have heard so much about it from viewers. Keeping it real is just keeping it real by saying, I think they did a great job translating all the events to modern times. Not an easy task. Most authors who attempted to do a modern interpretation messed it up. Thanks. We're better than those people. Well, stay tuned for more sad episodes. Mary-Kate and I will discuss the most talked about episode of the Lizzie Bennet Diaries.